Imagine you're sitting in a darkened theater or your living room, the lights dim, and as the screen comes alive, sound does more than surround you. It moves above, around, and through the space, guiding your emotions and your attention. For more than a decade, that magical sensation of sound behaving like a living, breathing part of storytelling has been dominated by one name, Dolby Atmos. But now, a powerful challenger has entered the arena, and it is not a company, it is an open standard called IAMF, backed by major technology players who want immersive audio to be as open and accessible as the modern internet. Today, we are diving deep into Dolby Atmos versus IAMF, what they are, how they work, why they exist, and what this competition means for filmmakers, musicians, gamers, manufacturers, and you as the listener. This is not just a feature comparison. This is a story about technology, control, innovation, and the future of immersive sound. Let's begin with Dolby Atmos, the name almost everyone has heard. Dolby Atmos is a proprietary immersive audio format created by Dolby Laboratories. In simple terms, Atmos changed the way sound is designed and delivered. Before Atmos, audio in movies and music was mostly channel-based. Front left, front right, center, surround left, surround right, maybe a subwoofer, and eventually systems like 5.1 or 7.1. Sound mixers placed audio into fixed speaker locations, and playback systems attempted to match that configuration as closely as possible. Atmos broke that limitation by introducing object-based audio. Instead of merely assigning sounds to channels, Atmos allows sound to exist as independent objects in three-dimensional space. A helicopter isn't just in the left rear speaker, it is a movable sound object positioned above you, behind you, or sweeping dynamically across space, guided by metadata that tells the playback system where that sound should be in 3D. Cinemas using Atmos can handle up to 128 individual audio inputs, typically a structured bed of around 9 or 10 fixed channels for ambiance and dialogue, plus well over 100 objects that move independently. That object and metadata system is the heart of Atmos. It means sound designers gain unprecedented creative control, and playback systems, from giant theaters to living room soundbars to headphones, can intelligently render that 3D sound field based on what hardware is available. Atmos is not itself an audio codec, it is a framework layered into Dolby Codex. In theaters, it is tied to high-end cinema processors. At home, Atmos is carried inside Dolby Digital Plus for streaming or Dolby True HD for Blu-ray and UHD discs. That means if you are streaming a Netflix movie, a Disney Plus series, or even listening to Atmos music on services like Tidal or Amazon Music, the immersive sound you hear is delivered as Dolby's data structure with Dolby's metadata, decoded and rendered by Dolby certified hardware or software. And that ecosystem is enormous. Atmos is in cinemas around the world. It is built into AV receivers, TVs, game consoles, smartphones, laptops, and headphones. It is heavily used in films, series, games, sports broadcasts, and increasingly in music, where artists are now creating albums specifically mixed in Atmos to create immersive listening experiences. But it comes with a trade-off. Atmos is proprietary and licensed. Device makers need Dolby's approval, developers need Dolby's tools, and the format ultimately exists under Dolby's control. That has benefits, quality consistency, strong branding, stable workflows, but it also introduces costs and vendor lock-in. For years, if you wanted true mainstream immersive sound, Dolby Atmos was the ticket, and Dolby owned the theater. Now, enter IAMF, the immersive audio model and format, and this is where the story starts to feel familiar if you follow modern media technology. Just as the Alliance for Open Media created AV1 as an open, royalty-free alternative to proprietary video codecs, they've built IAMF as an open, royalty-free framework for immersive audio. IAMF is backed by companies like Google and Samsung. It is not the product of a single corporation protecting intellectual property. It is a standardized specification designed to be openly implemented, extended, and adopted across platforms without licensing fees. So what is IAMF in technical terms? 
Like Dolby Atmos, IAMF is about immersive, three-dimensional sound, but it approaches the problem differently. IAMF is a model plus a bitstream structure designed to describe immersive scenes. Instead of being built only around the bed plus object model that Atmos popularized, IAMF is more flexible. It can handle traditional channel-based audio like 5.1.2 or 7.1.4. It can handle scene-based audio, such as Ambisonix. It can represent elements in a way similar to objects, enriched with metadata describing where they belong in space, how they should behave, and how they should be mixed under different listening conditions. Everything in IAMF is structured as units of metadata and audio packaged into a bitstream that playback devices can interpret and render dynamically. Where IAMF becomes especially interesting is in how it views personalization. The developers of IAMF built customization and user control as core principles. Think about accessibility. Not everyone hears the same. Some viewers want louder dialogue. Some need clearer narration. Some prefer a cinematic, boom-heavy mix, while others want a balanced experience. IAMF's metadata system can expose different mix presentations inside one stream, allowing users or devices to adjust elements like dialogue versus effects, choose alternate language presentations, or select different creative profiles without needing separate audio tracks. This is part of a broader movement in next-generation audio, where immersive sound is not only about placing audio in space, but also tailoring it to the listener's needs and environment. Another major difference is codec independence. IAMF is not tied to a proprietary codec like Dolby system. Instead, it is codec agnostic. The IAMF layer carries metadata and content organization, while the actual audio can be encoded using formats like Opus, ACC, PCM, FLAC, or others. This is extremely attractive to streaming platforms and hardware companies because it lets them choose the codec strategy that best fits quality, bandwidth, and performance requirements, while still benefiting from a unified immersive audio structure. IAMF can also live comfortably inside modern media containers and streaming workflows, aligning naturally with AV1, modern media pipelines, and internet scale delivery. So if IAMF is so compelling, where is it right now? It's newer. Dolby Atmos has a massive head start in content, deployment, and public awareness. IAMF is growing. It has been standardized. Samsung has begun integrating IAMF-based support, branded publicly as Eclipsa Audio, into new TVs and soundbars. Google has begun enabling IAMF on platforms like YouTube. Open source tools exist to author, decode, and experiment with IAMF workflows. Developers, researchers, and content creators can access reference implementations without paying licensing fees or committing to a closed ecosystem. However, even with that momentum, IAMF is still in its early rollout phase compared to Dolby's deeply entrenched presence. So as of now, Dolby Atmos remains the dominant immersive audio ecosystem, but IAMF has positioned itself as the open challenger with enormous potential. Now let's directly compare them, conceptually. First, ownership and licensing. Dolby Atmos is controlled by Dolby. That means reliable branding, predictable quality, strong certification, and trust built over decades. But it also means cost and vendor lock-in. IAMF is governed by a standards alliance and aims to be royalty-free. This opens the door for wider adoption in devices that want immersive sound without licensing burden, particularly web streaming platforms, budget hardware, and emerging market products. Second, how they model sound. Atmos is centered around a structured combination of fixed channel beds plus movable objects with a strong and proven rendering pipeline. IAMF is more general, more flexible, blending channel-based, scene-based, and object-like approaches structured through descriptive metadata and an open bitstream architecture. Third, codec strategy. Atmos is tightly linked to Dolby codecs and delivery structures. IAMF is codec agnostic. That gives services more technical freedom and can encourage innovation in compression, streaming efficiency, and integration with future systems. Fourth, personalization. 
Dolby Atmos can adapt to different speaker layouts and offers binaural headphone rendering, and in gaming context, objects can be highly interactive, but IAMF makes user-focused control foundational. Multiple mix presentations, dialogue control, accessible sound profiles, and personalized audio delivery are first-class citizens. Fifth, ecosystem maturity. Dolby Atmos wins today in availability, content catalog, and mainstream familiarity. IAMF wins in openness, future flexibility, and cost of adoption. If Dolby Atmos is the polished luxury ecosystem, IAMF is the disruptive open platform built for long-term innovation. There's also a strategic narrative at play. For many years, high-end audio technology was defined by proprietary expertise. Companies like Dolby and DTS built sophisticated systems, licensed them, and dominated. Today, we live in a world where open standards are reshaping video, networking, and communications. AV1 challenged H.264 and HEVC. Open source platforms compete with commercial software. IMAF fits that cultural and technological shift. It represents the belief that immersive audio should be a freely implementable standard built into the fabric of streaming media rather than something controlled by a single vendor. Dolby, on the other hand, represents continuity, trust, and proven excellence. It has years of engineering refinement behind its rendering engines, deep integration in Hollywood workflows, established creative tools, and global brand recognition consumers actually recognize. So what does this mean for creators? If you are a film studio, Atmos today gives you immediate reach, cinema-supported, home devices-supported, streaming platform-supported. IMAF may become attractive as it expands, especially for platforms tied to AV1 ecosystems or those wanting flexible and open pipelines. If you are a musician exploring spatial audio, Atmos currently offers a more established listening audience and production infrastructure. But IMAF could evolve into a powerful parallel space, especially if major streaming platforms adopt it broadly. If you are a game developer or a streaming platform architect, IMAF's openness and personalization layers are compelling, while Atmos remains deeply capable and battle-tested. If you are a hardware company, the choice becomes both strategic and economic. Supporting Atmos involves licensing and certification, but delivers consumers a recognizable feature they actively seek out. Supporting IMAF provides innovation freedom, cost savings, and alignment with open media standards that may become increasingly important in the next decade. And finally, what does this mean for you as the listener? In the near future, you may not consciously choose between Dolby Atmos and IMAF. Instead, you'll experience immersive sound wherever you consume media, and different platforms will quietly power that experience using one system or the other. What you will notice is richer soundscapes, clearer voices, more engaging environments, and maybe more control over what you hear. Atmos gave the world mainstream immersive audio. IMAF wants to democratize it. So Dolby Atmos versus IMAF is not really a battle of right versus wrong or old versus new. It is the story of a dominant, proprietary, highly refined ecosystem that set the standard for immersive audio and a forward-looking, open, flexible standard designed to push immersive sound into every corner of modern media without licensing barriers. Atmos is here, powerful and proven. IMAF is rising, open and ambitious. Together, they represent the future of how sound is created, delivered, and experienced. And if the competition between them accelerates innovation, enhances listener control, broadens accessibility, and drives quality upward, then ultimately, the real winners are all of us who love to be transported, emotionally and physically, by sound.